right guys welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to be riding our new 2023 honda crf 300 l so i'm going to take you along for a ride give you my thoughts about the bike along the way we're going to try it on different terrain uh back roads uh, some dirt roads how it's gonna feel you know getting up there at that 60 65 mile per hour mark but uh all right let's jump into the video all right so the first thing let's talk about the brakes on this bike while they're not like super aggressive they're not sport bike uh type brakes they have a single disc in the front and a single disc in the rear you're going to get the uh, dual piston caliper uh, in the front so stopping you know it is what it is uh, it's a dual sport bike it's not a rally bike or a road bike or anything like that but um, here we are we're just gonna go down uh, this is just a backcountry road uh, you can see I can maintain 58 uh, 60 miles an hour the acceleration is pretty peppy uh, I would say it's not as peppy as say my KLR but you know it does the engine does provide a lot of good low end torque and the gearing on the bike in my opinion is just perfect for what it is so uh now let's uh, take the bike and we're going to try to hit some gravel roads and give you guys my first impressions on what that feels like on this bike Alright, so this is the first time I've had the bike on some dirt pack gravel roads, so I can give you my honest uh, opinion of it. Um, you know, right away the bike hits the gravel and, you know, the tire, the tires on this bike are, are pretty good actually for, for this type of riding. Um, you know, it's a light bike, so it feels pretty stable uh, between your legs, uh, going down, you know, the dirt, um, the hard pack, you know, I'm not really feeling the bike move around too much. Uh, as you can see here, I'm, I'm just getting into some of the loose stone in the middle just to try to get a feel for it. Uh, accelerating out of the turn. Uh, the bike feels really good, feels stable, feels just like a dirt bike at this point. But um, yeah, you know, going across this loose gravel here, uh, the bike just moves around. I mean, it feels like a dirt bike and that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, you know, overall, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to take this, this bike uh, all day long on gravel roads it, it just feels like it it needs to be here and uh you know the the power delivery is, is very soft you know it is a you know is a single cylinder uh 286 cc bike um it doesn't feel like you know a factory race bike it definitely feels like it is a street bike uh on the dirt but you know you're getting the benefits of that you know dirt bike style suspension uh, this bike, the suspension is really soft. Um, again, I'm like 200 pounds. And for me, I feel like once I got this loaded down, I'd want to, you know, stiffen up that rear spring a little bit, you know, making those tight turns, giving it some throttle, no problem. Right, so just jumping back in here uh, a couple of things you're going to notice on the bike again this is my first ride review on the bike but i've had it for a few maybe a few weeks now and i've made some changes on it that you can see i put the uh tusk hand guards on there uh the pro taper pillow top grips and then i recently added uh the msv i believe uh three finger brake lever and clutch lever um that's just just that's just <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just for me, uh, my riding style, my riding position. I'm about uh, uh, between 6'1 and 6'2, 200 pounds. And, you know, this bar setup for myself, uh, it is the fat bar from uh, Tusk. It's the Chubb bar. And for standing up, it's just a lot more comfortable uh, for my body type on this particular bike. I uh, wasn't a big fan of the, the Honda bars. They look kind of uh, they, they look kind of inexpensive and cheap, but you're buying a budget dual purpose bike here and uh, you know, you're going to make a couple changes that best suits your needs. Now, speaking of things about the bike that I really don't like, I really don't like the fact that this brake line sits right in front of your face and it almost blocks out the uh, display most of the time when you're riding. But you know, 
I understand why it has to be there. I just think maybe Honda could have done a little bit better job in the design. Uh, none of the other bikes I've had in the past have, have had this annoying brake line uh, blocking my display, but I'll digress for now and we'll get back to doing some riding here. So now we're just gonna pull out on a country road here. We're gonna give it some throttle. Uh, I'm not gonna run it too hard. I'm still working on the break-in period. But uh, you know, as you can see, boom, we're up there 45 miles an hour pretty quick. Uh, this is, like I said, just a, a two-lane country style road. Uh, the bike, it just feels peppy, man. I really enjoy riding it. I know the displacement's small, but um, you know, it feels like it's just right at home, you know, <laughs> on these back country roads and stuff. I mean, it, this is where the bike belongs. You're, you're just gonna have a lot of fun on it and not be afraid to, you know, take it off on the gravel road, hit the hit the little single track you see, uh, just do all kinds of exploring. Um, you know, even in these little, you know, 90 degree turns right here with the factory tires, the, the bike feels very planted. It, it, it instills a lot of confidence. You know, I think for a new rider uh, getting out, uh, just getting into riding in general, I think a dual purpose or a dual sport bike is just such a great bike to learn how to ride on. It's very lightweight. Um, it's not intimidating. Uh, this bike in specific, the power delivery is not intimidating whatsoever. I mean, if you get it above, you know, that five to 8,000 RPM range, uh, the power comes on pretty strong, but it's not, it's not gonna pin you off the seat. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of fun and you're really gonna enjoy riding. And this, I think, is a great bike to introduce someone into riding and get someone started and being passionate about riding. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna take the bike up here. We're gonna get it up to speed, uh, 60 plus miles an hour, just to see how it feels. features I'm going to talk about on the bike car while we're getting it up to speed is uh, if you'll notice in the center of the dash there that little white light that's coming on that is a shift indicator I didn't pay attention to what rpm it come on but I think it's around 7,000 or so um, the other thing that you get with this display is a gear indicator which I think is really cool uh, unlike my KLR that has a spot for a gear, a gear indicator however it's not there but uh, you know both these bikes are budget bikes but uh, as we're up to speed here, the bike holds 55, 60 miles an hour with little effort. Um, the wind or you know an incline doesn't seem to affect it uh, too much. But uh, yeah, the bike just holds itself. Now you are going to get a lot of wind uh, coming, beat you in the chest. There's no wind protection on this bike whatsoever, so you will feel that wind. Um, but it's not so much that it's you know bogging the bike down, the wind resistance from yourself. But uh, yeah, so uh, here we are, we're just going down. This is a typical uh, two lane highway. And again, we're maintaining speed without any issue. Here we are rolling into town. And as you can see, we just passed a state trooper there. He's out uh, serving and protecting us. So give him a friendly wave, uh, but we're fully insured licensed up and hey we just passed another honda crf 300l so that kind of leads into the next question a lot of people ask is how does this bike perform riding through town uh commuting well you know a couple things about the bike that i think make it well suited uh to, to for city riding or if you live in a big city uh it's very lightweight it's nimble uh it doesn't have a you know a hardcore power delivery it's it's very forgiving uh in nature just just by the way the bike is and i think it makes a great city bike a good commuting bike so we're just going to roll through town here and we're going to come up on to probably one of the biggest complaints about this bike and uh we'll jump into that right now So probably the biggest complaint I have with this bike, and you know I haven't even ran a, a full tank of fuel through it yet, is it's only got a two gallon tank. And you know right now I'm looking down at the dash and it says I'm getting about 60 miles per gallon or so, give or take. And the thing is, your range is probably gonna be 
uh, somewhere between 100 miles and 120 miles if you're lucky. And I think that's why a lot of guys will add aftermarket tanks. I think a service makes one that basically will give you um, about another gallon. So give you another uh, 60 miles of range. And I think there's a, another tank out there that'll add maybe a half gallon, which isn't really worth it in my opinion. But uh, so what we're gonna do probably on this bike is we'll probably carry a, you know, like a one or two gallon reserve uh, tank on the back rack, uh, or just make sure that we're around gas stations uh, when we're out riding. So this is a low compression engine uh, and you can run 87 octane in it. Um, I'm just in the habit of running the high test stuff in all my equipment. Uh, so I, I just fill it up with 93 octane. And the gauge said it was a little bit less than a half a tank. So I would think it would take more than a gallon. Uh, so we're just going to comment on the accuracy of the fuel gauge. I think uh, I would rather it read a little high than a little low. But uh, in this case, uh, the bike took basically one gallon and it was one uh, notch below half. So uh, maybe the gas gauge isn't super accurate, but you know, I think the big thing is just, you're going to be getting gas a lot. All right. So I hope you guys are enjoying the ride review here on my Honda CRF 300 L. Again, this is uh, really the first time I've actually got it out, rode it through town, rode it on gravel roads and things like that. But, um, you know, I want to also ask if you would consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, give us a like, give us a share. Uh, it really helps keep us motivated and it also helps us keep our eyes open for people like that uh, to make sure that, you know, we're going to make it home and safe and uh, continue to make videos on different motorcycles and uh, give our honest opinion and our ride reviews on all of them. So again, thanks. Uh, we appreciate you and let's get back into the video. So another thing uh, a lot of people uh, question about this style bike is the seat height and this bike is about 34 inches or so um, at the seat. And you know, my end seems around 33. I could touch flat footed if I wanted to, uh, no problem. They do offer this bike in an LS version, which has a lower seat. And uh, I believe it's about two inches lower. Uh, so those of you that have a shorter inseam, that might be a good option for you. So another big concern with, with this bike, I think, and it's a just uh, concern is that, you know, is this bike uh, capable of riding highway speeds? And, you know, I will say the bike has no problem uh, running 60, 65 miles an hour. I just don't know that I would wanna do it for long periods of time. I didn't necessarily have a stretch of four lane highway to take the bike on, but, you know, as you can see uh, here in a minute, I'm gonna get it up to 60 plus miles an hour. And you know, the bike has no problem maintaining those speeds. Uh, the weather was pretty much perfect. I mean, there wasn't any wind uh, blowing me around, but you know, on the highway, when you've got lots of tractor trailer traffic, uh, lots of traffic around you, um, while the bike is perfectly capable of doing so, I just don't think it's best suited uh, for that type of environment. And you know, something a little heavier, uh, maybe like a KLR or you know, a um, Touareg or KTM, something with a little bit more displacement. You know, as you can see here, we just got passed by a tractor trailer. We were doing around 60, they were probably doing the same. And you know, there wasn't like a lot of buffeting back and forth. Uh, the bike felt pretty stable. But again, I don't think this is best suited for highway use, but you can certainly do so. So now I'm just kind of coming into the home stretch uh, for myself uh, to the homestead. And I thought this would be a good time to wrap this video up. And my final thoughts on the bike is, you know, yes, it is a great dual sport bike. I think it's a great entry level bike. And I think even if you're an experienced rider like myself, you're gonna have a lot of fun on this bike. 
and I don't know that you'd necessarily get to a point where you'd be like, ah, oh, I have to upgrade this bike. I think you're gonna enjoy it for a long time. It's a Honda. It's gonna have uh, incredible reliability. It's gonna last you a very, very long time. So with that being said, guys, uh, until the next video, we appreciate you and thank you so much and God bless.